Winter Candle by Jaron Ashford, illustrated by Stacy Shewitt. Nana Clover checked her list. Turkey in the oven. Potatoes peeled. Napkins folded just so. Candles? How could she have forgotten the candles? Thanksgiving at 3C Juniper Court without candles? Unheard of. Down she padded three flights to the super. Candles, Nana C? asked Trev. He opened the drawer and handed her a lumpy stick of wax. It's not pretty, but it will burn. Nana Clover spread some pine cones and leaves around the frumpy candle, and by the time her Thanksgiving guests arrived, the centerpiece glowed. Two weeks later, 2G was in an uproar. The Havdala candle's not here, Nat yelled from the closet. In the kitchen, Mom sighed. I forgot to buy a new one. Avi's lip quivered, but the stars will be out soon. Shaw, shaw, it's not the end of the world, Grandpa told the Danziger children. Abby, go ask a neighbor for a candle. Up Abby clattered and rapped on Nana Clover doors. And down he clumped with a bumpy, drooping candle. Abby's brothers stared. That's not a Havlada candle, Sam groaned. It's not braided. It only has one wick, Nat complained. It's not pretty, agreed Grandpa, but a candle is blessed by what it does not how it looks. It will shine. And shine it did as mom raised it high. Grandpa said the blessing to end the Sabbath and Avi hold the candle to the light. He had never, they'd never had a Havdalah candle burn so bright. Four mornings later, it was four D's turn for disaster. It's broken, Kirsten wailed. Liv came running. One, two, three, four candles on the Santa Lucia crown, and the fifth one snapped in two. Our cousins will be here any minute, said Kirsten. How can I be Saint Lucia with only four candles? Liv started to cry. No Saint Lucia crown and no special Saint Lucia breakfast. Girls, we have plenty of time, Mom reassured them. Kirsten, go ask a neighbor for another candle. Down Kirsten dashed two flights to Danziger's and came back with the funniest looking candle the girls had ever seen. Everyone will laugh at me, moped Kirsten. But nobody laughed because Kirsten carried the, in the teapot and the St. Lucia buns and the funny looking candle gleamed brightly as the star of Bethlehem. Winter came, snow fell, and presents were exchanged. The new year began and in 5A it began with a calamity. Jamila's got something in her mouth, Dante hollered, and I don't think it's food. Dad scooped up the baby and stuck his finger in her mouth. A piece of wax, a bit of string. Oh no, Dante howled. Jamila ate the faith candle in the canara. Go see if the Ericsons have one, his sister Monet suggested. Down the stairs, Dante plotted and knocked on the door. You're lucky. We still have this one, Kirsten said, and she handed him the bedraggled little candle. But Dante didn't feel lucky. How could they talk about faith with that sorry thing? And it wasn't even the right color. But when Dad lit the stubby candle, the flame leapt and danced, inviting the other six candles to do the same. A few days later came the biggest snowstorm of the season. Snow blanketed the front steps and made drifts on the window sills. Just after nightfall, the electricity went out and flashlight beams flickered in a few windows. In 5B, the newest family at Juniper Court huddled together in the dark. Their clothes were still in suitcases and their dishes were still in boxes. And Papa was somewhere in the city with a moving truck full of furniture. How will Papa find us, Nasreen asked. The street lights are out. Papa won't find us, cried Farouk. There's too much snow. Of course he will, Mama said. Nasreen, go next door and ask the neighbors for a candle. We'll put it in the window to light Papa's way. Next door, Dante scratched his head. I think there's still one left from Kwanzaa, he told Nazreen. He returned with the lamp of wax that looked like a fairy tale troll. Nazreen's mother lit the candle and set it on the windowsill. How's Papa going to see one little candle in such a big city, Farouk asked. But as they watched, the flame shimmered and grew. It glittered on the falling snowflakes until the dark streets seemed spun with stars. Many blocks away, Papa slowly steered the big truck through the snow-covered streets. What did that sign say? Pine Street? Vine Street? But then Papa noticed a glow up ahead. 
Maybe someone there could give him directions. Papa steered left, then right, then left, closer and closer to the glowing light. Papa turned the corner and gasped. There in front of him, five stories up, showed a warm, welcoming light. He was home. Papa climbed the three floors, four floors, five floors, and then, Papa's here, Nasreen and Farouk flew down the hall into their father's arms. Come see our new house, Papa, cried Nasreen, and look, everyone else is coming too. The little apartment filled with neighbors. Dante's family brought chairs and a folding table. Nana Clover made a bed out of blankets for Nasreen and Farouk, and Trev brought a small heater. The Erickson girls and their mother made sandwiches, and the Danzigers put a pot of soup warm on the camping stove. Everybody welcomed Nasreen and Farouk, Farouk and Mama and Papa to their new home. And the gnarled little candle glowed so brightly in the window that when the electricity finally did come back on, no one even noticed. And then the back page has an author's note and tells you about the holidays. It says, Hablada is a Jewish ceremony to say goodbye to the Sabbath. Families light a special braided candle that has more than one wick, so it burns extra brightly. Havdala begins when there are three stars in the sky, and it ends when the lit candle is dipped in wine and goes out with a sizzle. During Hanukkah, Havdala is observed the night before lighting the menorah. St. Lucia Day, December 13th, is celebrated by Scandinavians in Europe and America. It honors St. Lucia, who delivered food to the poor, wearing a crown of candles on her head to light the way. Today, families choose a daughter to be St. Lucia and carry a delicious basket to share with their friends. Kwanzaa is a week-long celebration in the end of December that honors African culture. African-American families gather to light candles in a, called a canara and a special candle holder. The candles represent unity, determination, responsibility, cooperation, purpose, creativity, and faith. 